This meeting of the Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholders is hereby called to order. Madam Clerk, can you please call roll? Freeholder Bobadilla, absent. Freeholder Vice President Gill. Here. Freeholder uh, Rufus Johnson, absent. Freeholder Jones. Present. Freeholder Luciano, absent. Freeholder Richardson. Here. Freeholder Siebel. Here. Freeholder Toro, absent. Freeholder President Timberlake. Here. Um, please stand to salute the flag. And I'm going to ask uh, Freeholder Vice President Gill to please lead us in the salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. I have before me a certification from the clerk. This meeting is indeed in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Freeholders, uh, Madam Clerk, are there any transcripts to be approved? Uh, Madam President, there are five. Board meeting February 22nd, 2017, March 22nd, 2017. Conference meeting March 8th, 2017. Conference board meeting April 5th, 2017. And April 19th, 2017. Okay. Uh, thank you. Fielders, are there any questions or comments regarding the transcripts? Okay. Recognizing freeholder uh, Leonard Luciano, now present with us. Freeholders, do I have a motion and a second to approve the transcripts? Move it. Moved by Freeholder Jones. Is there a second? Second. Second by Freeholder Richardson. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Bobadilla, absent. Freeholder Vice President Gill. Yes, present. <laughs> Freeholder Johnson. <laughs> absent. Freeholder Jones. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Richardson. Yes. Freeholder Siebel? Yes. Freeholder Toro, absent. Freeholder President Timberlake? Yes. So moved. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Madam Clerk, are there any topics of discussion? Madam President, there are none. All right. Um, then let's move to public comment session. Are there any members of the public wishing to comment on agenda items only? If so, please come forward, state your name and affiliation for the record, and you'll have three minutes to speak. On agenda items only? present with us. We're going to turn on your mic, Ms. Hill, because uh, the transcripts have to pick it up, okay? And everyone has three minutes to speak monitor by the clock to my right. Um, Nicole, can you okay. reset the clock for me? Thank you. Okay. okay, I'll start again. Ingrid Hill from East Orange, New Jersey. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank um, Freeholder Timberlake, Libby Johnson, Rufus Johnson, and the rest of the Freeholder Board and County Executive for making the ordinance for adopting the, the finding of the Affirmative Action Committee and establishing minority set-aside business, because I think it's very important and it's crucial. Um, I think it's something that's very much needed, and I think it's going to empower our community, and I think we're going to be able to see a lot of success in the future. We just have to make sure that it goes into full fruition. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hill. Good evening. My name is John Harmon. I'm founder, president, and CEO of the African American Chamber of Commerce of New Jersey and also the former chairman of the board for the National Black Chamber of Commerce. And I'm here to stand in support of the proposed affirmative action um, ordinance. Uh, I, I clearly see that this is in the interest of business here, not only in Essex County, but hopefully throughout the state of New Jersey. 
the demographic that we're looking to get more economic participation in opportunities that occur in this county are businesses of color. And as you look at statistics across the state of New Jersey, this demographic has the highest level of unemployment, the highest level of poverty, and many of the businesses have the lowest level of capacity. I firmly believe that if this ordinance is approved, we will see greater uh, prosperity for these businesses, and these businesses are the ones that will have a direct impact on those systemic adverse numbers that I just articulated. So on behalf of the 66,000 African American businesses and the 1.1, 1 .1, 1.2 African American residents in the state of New Jersey, I think that passage of this um, ordinance would be um, a game changer for many of those and, and give them a, a position or, or an equitable stake in the prosperity, not only, as I said, of Essex County, but here in the state of New Jersey. So I'm encouraged uh, uh, by what we have seen presented before this body, and I would, I would challenge you all to, to have the courage to move forward uh, and let this ordinance uh, be uh, memorialized in a way that uh, more folks in this region could have a, a better stake and having a better life. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Harmon. Over to here. Recognizing Freeholder Bobadilla present with us, and if, if I did not do so already, recognizing Freeholder Johnson also present with us. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the board of uh, chosen freeholders. First, I'd like to congratulate you all uh, on, um, on yesterday and on the job that I know that you're going to do going forward. Um, I'd also like to congratulate you on this particular ordinance, uh, ordinance number one uh, on first reading um, regarding your minority and women-owned joint venture set-aside program for the County of Essex. Freeholder Clark, can you speak into the microphone? Uh-huh, yeah. okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. And for the record, um, this is Freeholder, <laughs> former Freeholder Carol Y. Clark. Oh, right. oh, I'm sorry for the record, That's Carol right. Clark, uh, uh, East Orange, New Jersey. I'd like to um, commend the county executive, yourself, uh, county, yourselves, county staff, um, for this. This is a long time coming. Um, I just wish that um, freeholder Bilal Beasley were alive to see this day, because at, as you know, he chaired that committee. Um, but nevertheless, I'm sure he's looking down and smiling right now. And I'm sure that the gentleman sitting seated to my, my right and perhaps your left, um, former Assemblyman Bill Payne, who fought for very similar ideals when he was in the New Jersey State Legislature, is happy to see this come to fruition as well. So Godspeed, I'm looking forward to it. And I know that this ushers in a new chapter in Essex County's already illustrious history. Thank you. Thank you, Freelder Clark. Are there any other members of the public wishing to comment on agenda items only? Good afternoon, freeholders. I don't want to repeat everything that was said, Me. but I want, I want to speak on behalf of Women of Color and Allies, Essex County Chapter of the National Organization for Women. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard women say, I can't get a contract. I can't get a contract. Well, you just resolved a big problem. Almost. You haven't voted on it yet. But uh, thank you so much. Ms. Short, can you state your name and affiliation for the record? Moretta Short, President of Women of Color and Allies, Essex County Now. Thank you. Chapter. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public wishing to comment on agenda items only? Okay. Hearing none, are there any members of the public wishing to comment on any issue at all? Please come forward, state your name and affiliation for the record. Good evening, freeholders. I'm R. Ray Cowboy, uh, district leader, 
a 48 down in Weekway Park. Uh, and uh, I wanted to say that uh, I'm very pleased the way that things are looking up at uh, Turtleback Zoo with the amount of people that is coming up there is the eighth wonder of the world. And I'm seeing things that are happening and I was glad to, uh, I spoke to the chief, to the police, seeing that the, the traffic and uh, people are being able to cross and get out of the parking spaces pretty uh, readily when the police are, are there. But that's going to be something needed that I think if they uh, don't have the police there, they need some guards there, like crossing guards, uh, to help the people get across the street. There's a lot of diverse type of people up there, uh, uh, children and uh, invalids and uh, uh, people that's coming uh, to see, uh, to be a part of that uh, affair up there. And I, I was, I, I got the, the paper back for uh, what I was speaking on the sidewalks, uh, the, 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 the width of that sidewalk and the ditches that's there, they can't wait to 2018 uh, uh, capital funds, capital budget uh, for repairing that because I see people falling every day. I mean, that I'm up there into the ditch and uh, kids, somebody is going to get hurt. And I would like to maybe take an initiative to see that that can be rectified before the summer. And there's a lot more people coming up there behind uh, the weather being changed, and uh, and everybody is is talking about the zoo and the, and the, the beauty of everything. So I'm just wanted to speak on that, and maybe that they can hopefully repair that before the budget of 2018. Now uh, I, I appreciate all that you're doing, and with and also the linings up there uh, have to be re. re pointed for the arrows for the do not enter and the, the area for the people coming in to the park. All right, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Mr. Cowboy. And if there were any questions in your statement, we will respond in writing within seven days, as is our practice. Is there anyone else that would like to comment uh, on any issue at all? Please come forward, state your name and affiliation for the record. Hello, good evening. Um, my name mic. is Stephanie Goisota. I work, oh, I live in Nutley, and um, I work at 75 Park Avenue at La Casa de Ron Pedro in Newark, the Early Childhood Development Center. Um, I'm here to speak to you about the teachers, all the administrative staff, kitchen staff, janitors, everyone at La Casa, because we need support. About a year and a half ago, we all got together and voted for a union because we're disrespected. Our um, executive, hmm, executive director, Ray Ocasio, he is very rude to us. Like He doesn't like listen to what we have to say. And definitely our wages are an issue because I've heard the teachers and other staff haven't gotten a raise in about like <coughs> 10 years. Uh, let's see. And since La Casa is also known for like helping everyone in the community, like, you know, we everyone works hard to help everyone else. Even Ray, like you know, you see him do like fundraisers, like volunteer stuff, but then he doesn't help the actual workers that help the organization. Um, so we've been struggling like every day, like constantly asking him, like, oh, we need to agree on the first contract, but he keeps pushing us off. He he doesn't help us. And then, like, a lot of teachers struggle with their wages. Like, a lot of singles moms, they have to pay their mortgage, have to pay school loans. Like, what I earn is only $12 an hour. And I feel like, like that's not enough for what I do. Like, there's so many other opportunities, but I want to stay at La Casa because of what it stands for. Um, and so, with your help, hopefully, we can get across to Ray that we need we need a contract, we need the support. Um, and I have here some informational package and um, a letter that you can sign to show your support so maybe he can like listen to us better. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public wishing to comment? 
then we will respond in writing, as is our practice. Good evening. Uh, my name is Marlon Benjamin. I'm a teacher at the Leaguers Incorporated, North New Jersey. I'm also part of my company, also voted for the union, um, CWA 1037. Um, we have many issues at La Casa de, de Don Pedro. We've been trying to bargain for a while, and we're also getting pushed off from Veronica Ray. Our issues stem from health care. Um, our pre premiums have skyrocketed. Like for me personally, I had to drop my coverage. I was paying $550 every two weeks for just a husband and wife policy. That's $1,100 a month. And the reason why I dropped it to a lower um, payment is because the price skyrocketed even more beyond that, which I, could, I couldn't pay. And also the staff were given three days to make a decision about their health care. Three days is not a, a good time to make a sufficient decision that can benefit your family. Um, also, with late fees, we ha the teachers have been forced to work after contract hours and not being compensated properly for it or not even being compensated at all in some cases. Uh, I've been with the leaguers about eight years. Um, throughout the years, I've seen a decrease um, in the dignity and respect that and our civil rights that we're supposed to have as union members and regular human beings. Um, we are not given the proper resource to educate our children. We want our children to be the best. In order to be the best, you have to be given the best quality materials to get the job done. And if we don't do the job to their liking, we're being penalized for it. Our salaries are incorrect. Uh, for the past three years, we have not been given a raise, but when you look on black and white on paper, you will see a three to $5,000 raise within the, um, the, within the uh, sorry, within our W-2s. How, how can you not get a raise and you see it on paper? Doesn't make sense. Um, professionalism is another issue. When you bring any issues up, you are reprimanded for bringing the issue up to your administrator. They're supposed to resolve the issue, just like health insurance. When I showed them that they overcharged me for my health coverage by $550, on black and white, they said that, oh, we do not issue refunds. How come? Um, well, please support us in getting our contract. They, these are some reasons why we deserve a union contract. It will ensure that we are treated with dignity and respect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other publics, uh, any, anyone else from the public wishing to comment on any issue at all? Good evening. My name is Georgette Farcher, a resident of Excess County for the past 47 years. I have been working in education since 1978. I now currently work for UVSO for the past 12 years, to be exact. I am here on behalf of all the staff, my colleagues, teachers, secretaries, kitchen help, maintenance, and family workers. We provide love, care, safety, for all children and family, five days a week. We take great pride on fulfilling our job duties and responsibilities. Unfortunately, no appreciation for management. Early childhood workers are not being treated fairly. Primarily, some of us have been working in this field for more than a decade, and now surpassing the standard that have been put in place by the Department of Education set forth. In my observation, I realized that there has no, not been a ways in the past seven years, not cost of living. All the while, we have been asked to complete the same tax as my colleagues who are working in the district. We are standing here looking for the support of the community leaders and government officials to support us in this fight. 
We are suffering financially and being mistreated in the workplace by management, which is as extra added insult as we work hard to provide a loving and caring environment for all. Lastly, a lot of us are in our retirement age years. We have nothing to look for to. Many are above retirement age and are forced to continue working and this is, has become a major concern. We are working and only receiving enough to pay health insurance that fall short in covering our basic medical needs. Overall, this is completely disheartening. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public wishing to comment on any issue at all? Good evening, my name is Sylvie Guevara. I'm a teacher at La Casa Don Pedro, 75 Park Avenue. I'm here on behalf of all my colleagues who have been struggling this past year, well not really this past year, I'd say for the past 10 years that I have some coworkers who have not received a raise. Um, my biggest struggle is trying to understand uh, the excuses that we get, which is funding, because we are a collaborative site that pretty much we house or we have the students that cannot fit in the Newark public schools come to our collaborative site and we have to do exactly the same work that the Newark public school teachers have to do with not the same benefits, not the same pay, and not the same resources. But exactly the same is asked of us, whether it's through assessments, the same curriculum, the same lesson plans, we have the same uh, teacher coaches that come to our sites and expect the same from us without the same pay. And that's not fair. I don't think that's fair. I don't know if anybody here would think that was fair if you're doing the same work that someone else is doing with, for less pay. And um, it hasn't been just a year or two of frozen salaries. It's been over 10 years. If you look at some of my colleagues' work experience, credentials, and years of service and compare it to a public school teacher, some of them are making $30,000 less than what a public school teacher would be making. So I, I would ask you guys, um, you freeholders please, to support us in our journey to try to get the same equal pay for the equal work that we do for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public wishing to comment? Thank you. My name is Marlene Cruz. I am the president of the Essex County Latino American Chamber of Commerce. It is for me an honor and a pleasure to be standing before you all this evening. Um, I did prepare a speech I would like to read, but before that I want to commend you all for the great work that you guys are doing and for the ordinance for the minority and uh, small businesses and the women because I think this is a dream come true, so thank you very much. Um, Again, my name is Marlene Cruz, president of the Essex County Latino American Chamber of Commerce. And we are here today to respectfully request the endorsement of the Essex County Board of Chosen Freeholder. Um, you may ask us why you would want to support us and uh, allow me to share a little bit about what the chamber is and what it stands for and where we're headed. The Essex County Latino American Chamber of Commerce is an increasingly vibrant institution and a vital ingredient to the members uh, and their success stories. We are dedicated to providing and promoting the local businesses in Essex County. Our primary goal is to help business owners network and grow. We host networking events, workshops, seminars, and other activities. Um, this past 20th of April, we celebrated a milestone in the history of our chamber. We celebrated the swearing ceremony of the new board of directors. I proudly share I have been sworn in as the first woman president of the Chamber of Essex County um, in the history. Thank you. Since its inception, so I'm very proud of that. Um, so the question now lies what's next? Um, it is my desire to make our community an epicenter for equal business opportunity for all. 
I intend to lead the way and serve as a sounding board to all the women and minority business owners and entrepreneurs with laser focus on small growth and job creation. In order to further achieve our goal and growth, we have decided to start off an endorsement campaign to get the traction, visibility, and increased membership we seek. We are seeking endorsement for government bodies and individuals of all levels of government. In Essex County and our campaign will follow with an additional press exposure and funding, um, fundraising opportunities. I have decided to begin our campaign right now, right here, since I do have a personal relationship with uh, many of you. And uh, we respectfully request your endorsement and support to help the Essex County constituency discover and enjoy all the sophistication and the charm of Essex County. I will be following up with an individual email to each and every one of you um, asking for your endorsement formally and we hope to receive your support and the full body of the Board of Chosen Fruit Holders. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Marlene. Are there any other members of the public wishing to comment on any issue at all? Okay. Uh, hearing none, I thank everyone for their courage for coming to the microphone. Are you coming to the microphone, Ms. Deborah? I, didn't, I see you. Standing, so I wasn't sure. Okay. Just state your name and affiliation for the record, and then you have three minutes to speak. Um, good evening. My name is Deborah Smith Gregory, and I serve as the president of the Newark Branch in AACP. And I come before the um, chosen Board of Freeholders in response and in support of an ordinance um, that, will be re that will be read today um, that is around ensuring financial and economic equity for women and minority businessmen. So I ask that this body um, consider the, the, um, the ordinance um, to read it carefully and to uh, be of the mind that with all of the economic explosion that is happening in the city of Newark in particular and which is um, the, the epicenter of Essex County that we are um, assured that there will be residents who can take part of this economic explosion and to participate in uh, the renaissance and the revitalization of our great city. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any other members of the public wishing to comment on any issue at all? Okay, um, as I was stating before, thank you everyone for your courage for coming to the microphone. If you had questions, we will respond in writing uh, with, with, within seven days, which is our practice. Um, just for a point of clarity, uh, for those who are at home watching on TV or those who are here tonight, um, the union that came to speak before us, uh, the organizations in which they're talking about is not the County of Essex. I want to make that clarity. Um, however, the organizations I'm sure are here making a, a, an assumption, if I, if I may, uh, because they know that we are a union friendly board and that we will fight for what's right and I see some head shaking. So I can tell you that we will um, you know, send letters and also notify, notify the organizations that you spoke in regard to that uh, about your presence here and also you know, attach the comments and remarks to it. And um, you know, we, again, we are in support of unions. We are in support of a people. And uh, we, we appreciate the hard work that you do. Um, teachers from janitorial, you know, it, it, we just appreciate it. So um, I saw Friel the Richardson's hand up. Yeah, just a brief comment um, to, to those workers uh, who are trying to negotiate a, a decent wage and a decent contract. And I've seen this uh, many times before in union contracts where the uh, employer will use stall tactics uh, in terms of, you know, because all they have to do is supposedly bargain in good faith. And that means making a meeting. It doesn't mean that they have to actually do anything. So I've seen them stretch this out and stretch this out previously. I've seen this stuff before. So I understand your plight. And you certainly have my support and uh, pretty sure you have the support of the whole board 
as uh, stated by the president. So anything that I can do as an individual uh, member and uh, us collectively, uh, you certainly have uh, my support. Okay, we're going to move to close public comment session. Madam Clerk, do we have any ordinances on introduction and first reading? Madam President, we have one. Um, ordinance adopting the finding of the Affirmative Action Committee and establishing a minority and woman-owned joint venture set-aside program for the County of Essex. Okay, thank you. And um, I will explain this ordinance. Uh, you know, freeholders together and collectively, uh, we are setting a new bar. And I'm sure that the number one question that you get whenever you're out in the public is what is a freeholder? Hmm. Many people do not know what a freeholder is, but in fact, we are legislators at the county who have the ability to unapologetically write and pass laws to better the lives of people. And a new bar has been set by this entire board. And it's on the local level that together we can effectuate change the most. Just want to take the opportunity to thank uh, those freeholders who came before us who also blazed trails and paved ways. So a review of the county's 2014, 2015, and 2016 reports from the Office of Small Business Development and Affirmative Action revealed that the, the county's total average spend on contracts was 33% for small business enterprises. Uh, and by the way, that's SBE, because I'm going to start talking in acronyms, okay? But only 6% for minority business em enterprises, MBE, and 9% for women business enterprises, WBE, and 0.16% for veteran-owned business enterprises, VOBE. The Freeholder Board absolutely commends the county for having such a strong showing in the area of small business enterprises, SBE, but we conclude that the total average spend on minority MBE, women business enterprises, WBE, and veteran-owned business enterprises, VOBE, contracts should be greater. As a solution, the ordinance proposes an affirmative action set-aside program established with quantifiable goals of increasing the MBE, WB, VOBE spend and therefore increase contract participation too. The law further creates a joint venture program with emphasis on large construction contracts. This means major construction jobs, large firms will have to partner with MBE, WB, or VOBE firms to bid on contracts. The joint venture method has been successful in other places in the United States, such as the city of Atlanta. The result is removing historical blockades, preventing MBE, WBE, and VOBE businesses from being competitive in the bid process. For example, it is difficult for many of these companies to obtain bonding, mm. as it involves having large amounts of cash on hand not committed to use. This, free order, this freeholder ordinance states that the bond must be assigned to the joint venture form and thus open access to major construction contract participation for MBEs, v, WBEs, and VOBEs. So by leveling the playing field and increasing opportunities, and someone from the public mentioning equity, we're increasing opportunities in economic growth for companies who have throughout the nation been historically marginalized. And this is truly a hand up, not a hand out. The legislation is needed because on average, women in the United States make 20 cents less on the dollar than men. Contracting women-owned businesses can help close that gap. There are plenty of qualified, ready, and able minority-owned companies who can do the work but face passive discriminatory policies limiting access to capital. This legislation can improve such conditions and offer economic opportunity. And furthermore, of course, our veterans had our back. And now this law mandates we have theirs by making an effort to support their businesses. Just want to thank 
uh, the groups that came out to speak tonight and all those who have endorsed this legislation already, the New Jersey State NAACP, local Essex NAACPs, thank you Ms. Deborah, and all the other NAACPs who are here tonight, the Essex County Latino Chamber of Commerce, thank you Marlene, the New Jersey African American Chamber of Commerce, thank you Mr. Harmon, National Organization for Women, Essex <coughs> County, New Jersey, thank you Ms. Short, People's Organization for Progress, thank you Ms. Hill, Guyana American Heritage, thank you Lady Ira, Sanjeev CDC, thank you Doso, clergy throughout the county, veterans organizations, and many more. Also, it's interesting because past and present electeds, including Congressman Donald Payne Jr., State Senator Ronald Rice, Assembly Speaker Emeritus Sheila Y. Oliver, always our speaker, Assemblyman Thomas P. Giblin, Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker, former Assemblyman, Freeholder, and current Essex County Democratic Chairman Lee Ray J. Jones Jr., East Orange Council President, and now, yes, the Mayor-elect, Ted R. Green, South Orange Village trustee, also known as a councilwoman, Deborah Davis Ford, and former Essex County freeholder, Carol Y. Clark. And I know this is something that was always very dear to you and you fought uh, to see things like this come to fruition. So thank you, Carol. Bill Payne, former assemblyman. And also a fighter and a champion. But Henry Ford once said that coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, and working together is success. So everything is really, truly a team effort. So thank you again to the endorsing community groups, electeds and leaders, Freeholder Council, Michael Paul Vecchio, as well as Evans Anyawu. Thank you so much for all of your hard work with this. Freeholder Levy Jones and Rufus Johnson, also sponsors of this ordinance, and the entire Freeholder Board, uh, also co-sponsors on this ordinance, and the Freeholder and, and the Freeholder staff, Deborah Davis Ford and Debbie Marble, the County Executive Joe DiVincenzo Jr. and his administration, including Robert Jackson, again Bill Payne, councils and chief of staff. This is the introduction of this ordinance, and a vote will take place after public hearing on July 19th at that freeholder meeting. Mr. Paul Avecchio, do you have any questions or comments? I think you've uh, outlined it extraordinarily well, and uh, I'm glad you thanked me, but I'm really glad you thanked Evans, who is relatively new to our family here, but he's put in a great deal of effort. And uh, certainly our counterparts on the administrative side, uh, County Council, uh, the Administrator, um, Deborah Collins, et cetera, all of whom have, uh, have really been supportive and have given the appropriate pushback and has, in my opinion, have helped us make a better product and a better ordinance. And uh, my hat's off to you, for sure. Thank you, Mr. Paul Vecchio. Mr. McInerney? Freeholders. Freeholder Johnson. Through you, Madam President, I would like to say that <clears throat> this ordinance is a long time coming. And to see it, to actually see it here in front of us, and we will, we will, be, will be eventually voting on it, uh, it brings some joy to me because, like I said, I've been around this place a long time. And this is just due <clears throat> for all of those MBAs and SBAs that you you spoke on and it's about time that we took this pie and made sure everybody can get a slice of the pie. Thank you, Freelda Johnson. Freelda Jones? Well, Madam President, I, I, I'm very happy that we do have this legislation, but what happened as a chairperson of the affirmative action, who, who is, of course, is Lady Jones, when I look at the contracts and the people that go out and vote for us. Seventy percent of the people that vote in Essex County are people of color. But when the doing of business in the township or the county, you had to be a large corporation or whatever it is, and it cut the little man out of the process of participating. 
And I am very happy that I'm going to be a part of this legislation that people like me and smaller businesses will be able to be in the playing field for the quality of life. And if you who are in the community, when you look around Newark and Essex County, all of this money, millions of dollars, and when you look at the work site, you don't see any minorities. If they do, they are people from out of state. So it gives Essex County citizens an opportunity to participate. And I do hope that the board, because we opened it up, it's not just a select group, everyone was invited to participate in the meetings that we had on affirmative action. We'll support it and we'll move forward and make history for other urban counties or cities like Essex County. Thank you. Freelda Richardson. Yeah, I just want to echo uh, <clears throat> what my colleagues just said. I think it's a fantastic piece of legislation and long overdue. You know, one of the things I always ask contractors and, and folks who get these contracts, you know, are they local? Where are their business located? Did they hire anybody from Essex County? So to see now that these folks are going to really get an opportunity to participate in, in the financial and economic uh, growth uh, of their uh, businesses, but then they have an opportunity, and in my mind, an obligation to hire folks from Essex County as well. Uh, but this is a fantastic piece of legislation, and, and I can't wait until it's passed. And then we'll need the oversight. We'll need the enforcement piece. Uh, somebody ha always has to be watching. Law is the one thing, but enforcement is the key to this. Um, the creation of this ordinance, it's been a long time coming. I have, I remember the first conversations that took place, the idea, and you know, I'm so happy to see it tonight here. Um, and I just want to thank the president for your vision and your leadership and the affirmative action committee. Um, as, as Freeholder Richardson said, you know, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of work put here, but there's so much more work to be done so that it's successful. And I cannot wait to finally start seeing it rolling and seeing the, the, the joint ventures um, happen and seeing the small businesses, you know, actually growing. Um, and, and as Freeholder Johnson said also, you know, just everyone getting a piece of the pie and not just those who, have the money to get the bonding um, to be able to bid. So, thank you. Thank you, Freeholder Sorrow. Freeholder Siebel. Thank you. I'm pleased to support an ordinance which was really a long time in coming. And I'm hoping that in the future, this ordinance will really put Essex County forward. And I'm appreciative to the president and to the others for all the work you did uh, establishing this ordinance. And I'm looking forward to seeing how it works in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Friel de Sebo. Friel de Bobadilla. Thank you. Um, you know, I just want to commend yourself, uh, plus Levy and Rufus, uh, for bringing this uh, ordinance up. I, I think what's really important here is not only that we introduced this ordinance and vote on it, but that we keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you look at these percentages um, and what uh, amount of business we do here in the county, um, you know, the, the percentages are quite dismal. And so, you know, I commend your work and the work that's been done here, but I think uh, it's, it's far from over and we need to keep an eye on those numbers and make sure they start to grow. Thank you. Thank you. Free elders? Vice President Gill. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I think congratulations. I think this is a, um, a great piece of legislation. Um, and uh, as many of the members have said, a long time coming. Um, I would agree, though, that I think um, this is just one uh, step, hopefully, in a longer process. Um, oversight uh, will be as equally as important as um, passing this ordinance uh, tonight. Um, I hope, and it's my sincere hope, that uh, the ordinance will help um, 
not only put um, the people that we all represent in this county um, to work, uh, but also will help deal with the long-term and systemic issue of, uh, of pay, pay equity and equal pay for equal work um, that exists both um, in minority communities, but particularly among women. You know, the statistics that you gave, um, Madam President, are even greater, as you know, if you are an African American or Latino woman who owns a small business in terms of being paid <laughs> the same amount of money uh, that, a, that a man owned company receives. So um, hopefully, this is one step in a longer process. And hopefully, there'll be a time when we don't have to put in these types of protections, that these questions um, are probably not going to be anytime soon, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, but, um, but all of this is, I think, hopefully leading us towards that goal. So it'll have my wholehearted support. And uh, good luck. Thank you, Freeholder Vice President. Freeholders, Freeholder Toro. Sorry, I missed something I also wanted to say that I think um, it was said, but I think it, it, it's important to make mention again. And that is that, you know, this type of legislation has not uh, been seen in this state on any level of government. And I think that, you know, we're doing it here in Essex County. Um, and that just says so much about what we care about on this board and and making a real difference and you know creating something that other governments can can hopefully follow thanks thank you for elders for free elders okay um and you know enforcement is such an important piece and actually if um i know some people have uh some some uh audience members have uh the legislation in front of them, but the third paragraph um, up, starting from the bottom up on the last page, um, speaks to enforcement. And oftentimes affirmative action and ordinances such as this, um, you know, whether or not it be national, just affirmative action in general, can often fall apart in the enforcement stages. So this legislation speaks directly to um, the enforcement, including an enforcement officer, um, and I have high hopes that this will be and, uh, administered properly and enforced properly, and that is the intent of this ordinance. Um, Madam President. Free older Luciano. Uh, I do apologize, Madam President. I'm on some medication. I have an ear infection. Um, I, too, wanted to make a comment. I know when you bought this to me, um, I thought it was an excellent idea. And even though I'm sitting here groggy on medication, I came to my senses, and I want to make sure that I go on public record. I, I, I do support this 100%. I think it's a fantastic idea. You know, our county is a progressive one, and we want to go in the right direction. So thanks for, um, again, spearheading this because I know these are things that we've talked about, um, but it's a whole different animal when you actually put it into action. So thank you. Thank you, Freeholder Luciano. And um, there's someone else that I must mention and I must thank, and I always like to acknowledge whenever they're in the room, and that's my father, Bill Timberlake, who's in the back. And um, <laughs> thank you for instilling in me what you have throughout my whole life and always supporting me. And um, just a little fun fact is also a veteran. So this is for, you know, women, minorities, and veterans. We gotta have our vets back. All right, any other questions or comments? Mm. Hearing none, um, usually it is uh, our practice and decorum. Uh, the president often doesn't move things and the opportunity is given to other freeholder members, but I will ask my colleagues if um, we will waive that, uh, that policy or culture that we have really for this one. And um, I would like to move that we introduce this ordinance. Uh, do I have a second? Second by Freeholder Jones. And if there was a second for the second, I saw Freeholder Johnson. <laughs> uh, roll call, Madam Clerk.
But I'll pass this off to the lady. If you know. <laughs> Get some equality. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Vice President Gill. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Jones. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Richardson. Absolutely. Freeholder Seabol. Yes. Freeholder Toro. Yes. Freeholder President Timberlake. Yes. So moved. Madam Clerk, do we have any ordinances or resolutions for listing purposes only? Madam President, we have none. Thank you, and thank you for everyone who came tonight. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have any ordinances or resolution on second reading and public hearing tonight? Uh, Madam President, there are two. Ordinance number 0-2017-0003 um, guarantee ordinance of the County of Essex, New Jersey, securing the Essex County Impu Improvement Authorities not to exceed $43,250,000 project consolidation revenue refunding bond series 2017 refunding project for the purpose of providing additional security therefore and determining certain other matters in connection therewith. Okay. I hereby declare the public hearing on ordinance 0 2017 open. If there's any member of the public who would like to comment for or against this ordinance, please come to the microphone. Madam Clerk, let the record reflect that we have no member of the public wishing to comment. Mr. Polavecchio, do you have any questions or comments? No, I don't, Madam President. Mr. McInerney. Madam President, again, uh, this, is, uh, this was explained by Mr. Acker at our last meeting. It is a... Um, an ordinance to uh, refund uh, a significant amount of debt, which may not necessarily reach the $43,250,000 here, uh, in order to take advantage of savings of lower interest rates. The present value savings of this uh, ordinance are far in excess of the 3% that's required for a refunding. Uh, it includes a number of bond issues within this refunding, including the cogen facility, the correctional facility, the youth house, the sportsplex, and the parking facility. So all of these are indiv individual bond ordinances that are now being, um, portions of which are now being refunded at, at lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. And we'll, if, you, if you don't mind, we'll see in the next, rep see in the next ordinance that all those agreements that pertain to those specific bond ordinance that I mentioned now have to be amended. Those lease agreements, because the fact that the principal and interest payments will be adjusted because of the lower rates. Thank you. So I'm kind of beating you to the punch on the second one. Yes, thank you. Free holders, do you have any questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. McInerney. It's very straightforward. Uh, do I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing on Ordinance 0 2017 Move it. Moved by Freeholder Richardson. Is there a second? Second by Freeholder Johnson. Mm -hmm. Roll call. Freeholder Toro. Yes. Freeholder Seville. Yes. Freeholder Richardson. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Jones. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Vice President Gill. Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder President Timberlake. Yes. So moved. Thank you. Mr. Jackson, I'm sorry, did I see your hand go up? Uh, no. no, you did not, Madam President. Okay. <laughs> At least not for that purpose. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'll take the vote again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back. Can I get, do I have the same mover and second to you, close public hearing on ordinance 0 2017? You did, you did, you did that. No, just the same mover and second to adopt. To adopt. Oh, right. Yeah, okay, that's where I was going next. I thought okay. you meant that I did oh, it reverse. No, no, no. Okay. Yes. Do I have the same mover and second to adopt yes, this yes. ordinance? Okay, Madam, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, Frio de Toro? Yes. Frio de Cibo? Yes. Frio de Richardson? Yes. Freeholder Luciano? Yes. Freeholder Jones? Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Vice President Gill? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Absent. Freeholder President Timberlake? Yes. So moved. Great. 
Great. Uh, please let's move to Ordinance O-2017-00004. And please read. Uh, ordinance number O-2017-00004. Ordinance authorizing the execution or acknowledgement and delivery by the county of certain agreements in connection with the Essex County Improvement Authority not to exceed $43,250,000 dollar project consolidation revenue refunding bond series 2017 refunding project okay mr uh, i hereby declare the public hearing on ordinance 0 2017 0004 open if there's any member of the public wishing to comment for or against this ordinance please come forward madam clerk let the record reflect but there is no one wishing to comment on this ordinance at this time. Um, Mr. Polavecchio? No additional comments. Okay. Mr. McInerney? Nothing more than what I said earlier. Freeholders? Any other additional questions or comments? Not also discussed at our other freeholder meetings, all right? Hearing none, do I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing on Ordinance 0 2017 0004 Moved by Freeholder Siebel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Freeholder Vice President Gill. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Bovadia absent. Freeholder Vice President Gill. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Jones. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Richardson. Yes. Freeholder Siebel. Yes. Freeholder Excuse me, Toro. Yes. Freeholder Timberlake, Timberlake, President Timberlake. Yes. So moved. Thank you. And Mr. Coltree, I glanced over there and saw you, and I wanted to also thank you for your help with this ordinance, too. I missed that in my remarks. Um, now, let's move to Resolution 1. Madam Clerk, please read. Resolution 1, advise and consent, nomination for the appointment of Carmen T. Morales to the Essex County College. Move the same mover and second to move the ordinance. Did we yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Mr. Tedesco always has my back. Thank you, Mr. Tedesco. Comes to all the freeholding meetings, and we miss you when you're not here. All right, so we did that already. All right, that's okay. Um, Do we have to vote again? Yeah. Yes, we did it already. Right. Okay. So, Madam Clerk. Advise and consent nomination for the appointment of Carmen T. Morales to the Essex County College Advisory Board of Trustees. Okay. Mr. Jackson. Uh, good evening, Madam President. And I, too, want to congratulate the freeholders who uh, were successful in their election uh, yesterday and also to thank uh, Freeholder Bobadilla and Freeholder Toro for your service uh, previously. And um, again, just thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Uh, the, the administration is really honored to uh, nominate for your advice and consent Carmen T. Morales to the uh, board of the Essex County College, and she's here to answer your questions. Please come forward, state your name and affiliation for the record. Madam President, freeholders, good evening. My name is Carmen Morales. I am a resident of Newark, uh, over 30 years resident of Essex County. Tell us about yourself and your qualifications. So my name is Carmen Morales. As I stated, um, I am currently an administrator at Essex County Vocational Schools at North Tech, which is right across the street. Um, I am a educator for many, many years. Um, I started as a preschool teacher, kindergarten teacher, an adult education teacher, and currently am the administrator here at Essex County Vocational Schools High School. Um, I'm very honored to be nominated to the Essex County Board Advisory Board. Um, I think with my educational background, um, I look forward to really achieving um, the bridge um, between high school and college. And it's something that we're looking at at a high school level already. So being part of the advisory board would help to um, look at ways that at a high school level, what can we do for our students to close that achievement gap and really get them um, college and career ready? Thank you. 
Mr. Paul Vecchio? No comment. Mr. McInerney? No comment. Freeholders? Free, freeholder Luciano? You beat Th Freeholder Sabo at that time. Gotcha. <laughs> Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just want to put on the record, and I'm not trying to hurt Ms. Morales, but I know her for a very long time. She was actually my study partner for a few years at Seton Hall University. And I can tell you, she was very good at statistics. And I probably wouldn't have made it through if it wasn't for her. So I'm very confident I'm that glad. she's going to do a great job with the Essex County uh, College Board. And uh, it's just really good to see you again, Carmen. Thank you for Best your holder, Luciano. Thank you. Seton Hall? Seton Hall, Red. All right, VP. <laughs> Real to see both? Thank you. I'm, I'm very pleased to support Carmen Morales to be appointed to the Essex County College Advisory Board of Trustees. You are going to do a wonderful job, and they need good people there. And I'm pleased that you're willing to contribute your time and effort for such a worthwhile cause. Thank you so much. Thank you, Freeholder Siebel. Freeholder Bobadilla. Thank you. Uh, you know, we've worked together. You're a very capable and smart individual, and I think it's a great addition to us, so welcome. Thank you, Freeholder Bobadilla. Freeholders? Freeholder Vice President Gill? Thank you, Madam President. Thank you for uh, volunteering your time. Absolutely. And, and for giving your service to the county. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Freeholder Richardson? I saw your hand. Uh, I just want to echo what my colleague said. I, uh, you would be a wonderful addition overall. <coughs> and uh, thank you for your service for volunteering. Uh, Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Absolutely. Thank you. Freeholders? Freeholder Jones? I want to concur with what has been stated. But one thing for sure, when you're dealing with schools or higher education, you need people on those boards who know something about educating people. And I think you are a perfect selection that uh, you sit on that board. And I, I wish you the best of luck. I appreciate it. Thank you for your help. Toro. I had a, an opportunity to review your resume. And I'm very pleased you know, with all your experience and qualifications. Um, I believe it was just the last meeting we also appointed someone and uh, we basically I think it's it's a good opportunity to just uh, echo what was said in that meeting as well that um, at the Essex County College you know in, in recent in the last recent year has had some trouble and I'm happy to see that you know our county executive is appointing um, individuals who, who, who really are passionate and qualified and have the experience. So congratulations. Thank you, Freeholder Toro. Freeholders? Okay, I echo the sentiments of our colleague. There's a lot going on. I do find comfort in your resume and also your track record of putting, you know, students and people first mm -hmm. because um, we're going to be looking for uh, that type of advocacy in you. Um, on that board, and uh, I think you'll be an excellent addition. I appreciate it. Thank you, Madam President. Okay. Freeholders, anyone else? Hearing none? I think that was everyone. Just about. Uh, we're going to let's list this for action uh, later this evening, um, but in which it will be voted on. Great. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Madam Clerk, please meet, move to resolution number two. Resolution two, the Office of the Sheriff's Contract Award to Clearview Data Systems, the sole responsive and responsible bidder to provide hardware for data work, photo manager identification system, 12-month agreement amount not to exceed $142,986. Okay, Mr. Jackson. Uh, yes, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, Madam President, this is a system uh, through the office of uh, the sheriff that will allow municipalities and the sheriff's office to uh, integrate information better uh, and more efficiently. And uh, Mr. Michael, uh, who's here from uh, the vendor, is here to uh, give you more information about this system. Okay, please come forward, state your name and affiliation, and just tell us a bit about the system. Sure. <clears throat> Excuse me. My name. Thank you. My name is Bill Michael. I'm the account manager for uh, Clearview Data Systems. Um, the system that we're talking about tonight um, is the system that's actually already in place in the Essex County Sheriff's Department that does the criminal booking and mugshot processes. They have multiple stations throughout the Sheriff's Office. Um, the uh, award in question for the RFP, we were the respondent because the hardware which was put in place in the system over 10 years ago has reached its serviceable end of life 
and uh, that was the purpose of the RFP to refresh the hardware so that uh, there wouldn't be any catastrophic breakdowns of the system um, and that so it could, they could be placed under service contract again. Uh, I don't know if you want any other detail about the systems but uh, um, they take the fingerprints and the mug shots of the criminal and offender processing, um, they process them within the uh, Essex County Sheriff's Department and then they also send the fingerprints down to the New Jersey State Police for the APHIS system for the state. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Paul Vecchio. Um, this was the, this gentleman's company was the sole responsible and responsible bidder, uh, it appears, and it sounds like this is an upgrade to an existing system. I didn't hear the question, I'm sorry. No, it wasn't a question, oh. just a comment. Oh, okay. Mr. McInerney? No Freeholders. Okay, hearing none, thank you so much. Thank you. Action will be taken later this evening. Please list it. Madam Clerk, please move to resolution number three. Resolution three, Department of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs contract award to Precision Time Systems to provide maintenance of the park and ride facility, parking access control, and security systems exercise 12 month contract extension option amount not to exceed $47,500. Mr. Jackson. Yes, Madam President, this is a 12-month contract extension uh, option. Um, it's based on 20% discount on parts and $100, $110 uh, per hour for labor, and uh, Josh is here along with the vendor. Okay, and Madam Clerk, can you please also I'm sorry, Madam Clerk, I misspoke. The vendor's not here. It's under 100000 so I misspoke. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you please, is Josh here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. right yes. Right in my face, Josh. Hold on one second, okay? Please read resolutions four, five, six, four, five, and six as well. Okay. Resolution 4, Department of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs Professional Services Agreement to provide entertainment services for Essex County Turtleback Zoo, Lisa Lou Entertainment, amount not to exceed $25,000. Resolution 5, Department of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs contract award to Mitchell Products, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder to furnish and deliver 10 to 15 percent Dakota Peak Greens top dressing, 24 month agreement amount not to exceed $85,000. Uh, resolution 6, Department of Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Affairs contract award to Aqua Miss Irrigation of New Jersey to provide irrigation, maintenance, and repair services for various park facilities, exercising 12 month contract extension option amount not to exceed $364,585. Okay, Mr. Jackson. Um, I'll just defer to Josh and his Madam Thank President, you so much. with your permission. Josh. Joshua's eight, Sussex County Parks. Um, I'll go through of them, through them one at a time. Uh, number four, as uh, the administrator stated, is for uh, maintenance of the park and ride facility. The contract specifically isn't the structural maintenance of the facility, rather it's the uh, point of sale system as well as the gates and um, pay on foot machines. So uh, would you like me to keep going? Please. Uh, number f number four is for um, Lisa Lou Entertainment Services. It's uh, a, a not to exceed contract on an as needed basis to uh, provide various entertainment um, items over at the zoo as well as the South Mountain Recreation Complex as well as some other events we may have, um, be it senior wellness or what have you. Uh, it would include uh, things such as face painting. They'll provide a Santa during the holiday lights. Um, events and uh, some walk around performers such as uh, stilt walkers and other such things. Um, if, if you guys are at the um, open house over the weekend, you would have seen similar performances such as that. Number five is for top dressing over at the uh, golf course. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's just uh, top dressing at the golf course. And uh, number six, what is what is top dressing? Top dressing? It's uh, different types of uh, grasses and, and seeds to overlay the course so that the greens stay as fresh as possible. Thank you. Sure. It's one of those things where when you're in the industry, you know the term and you think everybody knows the term, <laughs> but everyone doesn't. So thank you for the clarity. Anytime. Uh, and number six is for Aquamist. Um, that's for our irrigation system throughout the uh, park system. We have several um, irrigation uh, systems and we do have the vendor here uh, if you have any questions. Okay, 
Good evening, Madam President. Good evening. You can and, take the microphone. And uh, chosen freeholders. Uh, my name is Walter Mugavin. I am the owner of Aquamist Irrigation, and we have been maintaining all of your irrigation systems in the county for quite a couple of years now, as well as the fountain aerators, irrigation systems at the three golf courses, and um, your water parks. And um, we certainly enjoy continuing doing that. Thank you. Mr. Paul Vecchio? Uh, I think my questions are to Josh, not to this gentleman. On, did we cover uh, on this one and actually on the earlier one? Three. Josh, on both three and six are contract extensions. Um, to, uh, contract extensions on the original. Are these holding the same prices as the original uh, terms? Yes, they're identical. Thank you. Do you have another question? Or? No, that was it. Mr. McInerney? Two for, two for did, you, uh, did you cover resolution number three? Because we, we just moved on. I had a question on three. I, I have a question Josh? on three. three. Resolution number three, can you re-explain? That's a parking facility. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He said four, but he explained three. Uh, Joshua is HS County Parks. Through you, Madam Chair, apparently I... Uh, Got ahead of myself, and uh, I guess I was anxious to go home and see my son, so I said four instead of three. But um, three is for the, uh, that's the park and ride maintenance system. And again, it's not for the structure, it's for the, um, the gates and the pay on foot machines. Which, which parking facility is that? That would be the one closest to Northfield Avenue, the older of the two facilities. Okay. So my question there is, and it probably has nothing to do with this contract, but since it's on the agenda, I want to bring it up. There was a, um, a limitation on the amount that could be charged as a fee for parking there based on the fact that the state had, get, had financed a good portion of that, of that facility. As that debt's being paid down, uh, or, or as our debt's being paid down, or as time goes on, does that restriction still exist, or are we allowed at any point in time to raise those fees, and have we done so? Uh, through you, Madam Chair, um, that is something I, I would have to get back to the board on. It's, it's not part of yeah. this. So I'm asking yeah. the question. It's part of that park and ride. But I, I will say this. The park and ride has been there for, I want to say, at least 10 years. It might be a little longer. And um, the fees from day one have been the same as they've been since its inception. So uh, they have not I'm, changed. And all I'm asking is that that was a legal restriction that we could not raise those fees based on, I think it was $8 million, $6 million was state money. The only thing we could charge on was the $2 million that the county paid, as I recall. All I'm saying, at some point in time, is that a permanent restriction that stays with the building forever, or are those fees ever allowed to be increased? Got it. Okay. Mr. Jackson, Mr. Jackson, regarding the question, are you good, Mr. McInerney? No, I'll, 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 I, it's not a question relevant to this, so okay. the administration will get back. For, the only me. other question on this is that I noticed that only $18,000 was expended on this contract last year. Mm -hmm. So that was just as a, as a, as a matter of, 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 of uh, need, I assume. Yeah, c correct. Through you, Madam President. Yes, it's uh, as needed. And, um, you know, if uh, other than the inspections, if nothing's broken, then uh, we don't have to spend to get it fixed. Thank you, Mr. McInerney, because you raised the question. Um, it was asked in leadership uh, as well. What was the um, the prior amount not to exceed if only 18 was spent? For for this contract, it would have been the same since this is a renewal. 47.5. All right, freeholders. Freeholder Jones. Uh, I'm concerned about number six. What parts are those that are for irrigation? to provide irrigation maintenance and repair services for various parks and facilities. So how many parks are we talking about? Close to 40. And just state your name and affiliation again, just for the record. Oh, uh, Walter Mugavin, Aquamist Irrigation. Uh, I believe it is pretty close to 40 parks. 40 parks. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to talk about one specifically. That's Wheatgrain Park. Uh, I've, I've seen the air raiders, but I think I brought this issue that on the side of 22, it's when we have a heavy rainfall or whatever, is flooded in that area around the, um, the lake. 
and the algae that makes it don't look really good. It looks unhealthy yes. uh, in there. Will you be working with that? With the we just we just maintain the one fountain aerator that's in there, and for the size of that lake, it should really need more. But I believe the issue was brought up a couple of years ago, and it was a little cost prohibitive to try to bring electric to the other portions of the lake to install additional fountains to get rid of those algae blooms. But that's certainly something that mm -hmm. the county can revisit at any time. But we only maintain uh, that one fountain that's in there. They Whereas know. opposed to like Orange Reservoir, there's four fountains, and that's in a much well, greater... The, the, the fountain, you're talking about the aerators that you see that keeps the water moving. Yes, yes it, it pulls water from four feet underneath and throws okay. it up in the okay. air, oxygenates it, and puts it back down, and that's what kills off all those algae blooms. But if you only have one device and the lake is five times the size, you're not going to get the same results. I hear what you're saying, but, but I would like for you, uh, the director of recreation or whomever dealing with the park is to visit that because it's unhealthy on that side and people cannot utilize that area of the park when it's, it's flooded. You have to climb that. I don't go up there anymore because my knees bother me, but that, you know the area, am I correct? So I would like for you guys to look into your budget or whatever is necessary and take care of that particular area because it's an eyesore and you cannot utilize it for weeks. I don't know if people still find it or not. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Joshua Zates, Escada Parks. Through you, Madam President, um, I can tell you that uh, we, the Parks Director spoke to the Parks Maintenance uh, Director actually today. and. Um, he was out there taking a look at it, so uh, we expect that he'll report back to us and give us some recommendations. Free holders. Okay. Hearing none. Thank you so much for your time. Thank We're going to list off resolutions three through six for action later this evening. Madam Clerk, please move to resolution number seven. Eight, nine, and nine. Please read. Uh, resolution seven, Department of Public Works Division of Engineering contract award to JC Contracting, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder for traffic signal and roadway improvements at West Greenbook Road and J. Han Drive, North Caldwell, 210 day contract amount not to exceed $298,800.80. Resolution 8, Department of Public Works, contract with Shulger Property Services, the lowest responsive and responsible bidder to provide snow and ice removal services for various county buildings, November 1st, 2017 through April 15th, 2019, amount not to exceed $599. $1,500. Resolution 9, Department of Public Works, Division of Engineering. Resolution consenting to the Township of West Caldwell. Resolution DP-17-091, requesting that the County of Essex reduce the speed limit on a portion of the Central Avenue in the vicinity of Washington Elementary School from 35 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. Mr. Jackson. Madam President, uh, item seven uh, is an improvement to the intersection as uh, Madam Clerk uh, read through, uh, and you almost for $300,000. If you may recall, on May 24th, the uh, board passed a um, budget insertion for North Caldwell's portion of this, which is, about, which is the third. Um, this will be, we received six bids from six vendors, um, a 200-day contract, and um, they're going to be installing a new signal and other crosswalks and the representative from the vendors here to give you more detail. Okay. Contractors here? You falling asleep? <coughs> no. All right. John Cunha, JC Contracting. Please tell us a bit about the contract. It's a traffic signal improvement, some minor concrete work, um, just uh, improvements to the intersection. 
Okay. Mr. Paul Vecchio? Uh, I don't have any questions. Mr. McInerney? No questions. Freeholders? Very straightforward. Okay. Uh, okay, Mr. Jackson. Yes, item eight, uh, Madam President, is a contract with Schroger, uh Services. Excuse me. Good evening. And um, Mr. Scanius is here to give you details on that. It's in approximately 14 buildings uh, around the county. Good evening, Madam President, chosen freeholders. Um, my name is Clarence Sc Nathaniel Scottings III, a project manager for the Shogger Group, Shogger Property Services. Um, first, before I um, discuss this item, I'd like to congratulate the board in regards to the set aside program for WBEs, MBEs, SBEs, as well as VOBEs. Thank you. Do you remember all those acronyms? Yes, because I, per, I do all the paperwork for SED requirements for a lot of different projects, so I'm familiar. With, and also DBEs, which was not referenced there, Disadvantaged Business Enterprises. Um, so this project um, in particular is a snow removal services for um, a two-year period um, starting uh, November 1st and ending, I think it's April 15th. Um, each snow season period is for a duration of five and a half months. Um, the, in this bid, there was the monthly rate, the first year rate, and the second year rate. Um, our pricing was consistent for both years, so we did not have an in, um, increase. Now, we've been performing uh, this snow removal, ice removal for the county for many years now. Uh, we're familiar with all the sites. These are your administrative offices, um, locations in Verona and Cedar Grove, um, as well as... right here, the Hall of Records, <laughs> uh, Detention Center, the Sheriff's uh, Headquarters, um, the CSU in orange, and not to forget the Correctional Facility in Newark. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for always giving a thorough explanation. Uh, Mr. Polavecchio. No question on this. Mr. McInerney. No questions. All right, freeholders. Okay, hearing no questions, uh, we are going to list it for action later this evening. Thank you. Um, now that that's out of the way, I just wanted to take the opportunity to say, you know, I appreciated the work that Shulger Group did for the community in relation to Integrity House. Uh, Apostle. Apostle House. Yes. I was looking at you for clarity. I was, that, yeah, yeah, I got you back. <laughs> Apostle House. You all did yes. an extreme home makeover. Yes. And had, you know, um, yes. sponsors. And it was very nice what you did for those who are homeless and the women thank and you. children. And I, I'd like to thank your presence for being there. Um, Freeholder Luciano was also present that day as well, um, doing a lot of work. Um, and um, Freeholder Boba Dia yeah. was also present there. We were lifting some uh, heavy uh, <laughs> landscaping uh, mulch and stuff there that day as well. <laughs> yeah, Freeholder Boba Dia with your daughter, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I think what what the Shogar Group has done for the past, uh, what, 11 years? Um, well, our company's been in existence for 30, but uh, we did an extreme makeover about 10 years ago with, at the time, Mayor Booker, who is now, of course, our senator. Um, yes. Yeah, I, I think um, what you guys have done for Apostle House for the past 11 years is just, uh, it's just an example, I guess, to the rest of the companies that we do business with, that they have to give us something back in return other than a service, uh, meaning that we're looking for community engagement as well. And, uh, you know, I thank you for allowing me to get involved. Uh, for the record, my daughter did work <laughs> quite hard that day. Uh, she was exhausted. <laughs> Three and a half hours of landscaping and, and, and renovating did her in. But, uh, you know, if I don't show my own kids uh, what it is to serve, then I'm doing something wrong. So thank That's you right. for allowing me that yeah. opportunity. Thank you. It was a group effort. Um, many companies were present. I don't know all the names off the top of my head. But you can go right to our website. We have videos in regards to that day's events. And the residents were very pleased to have our assistance. Very pleased. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you. Mr. Jackson. Yes, ma'am. Um, item nine is um, simply the uh, township of West Caldwell is looking to reduce the speed around one of its uh, schools, the Washington Elementary School, from 35 miles an hour down to 25, and is requesting the county to um, join in with them and, and support this uh, change and approve it. Uh, it's coming from the Board of Education and the township. Uh, the cost is relatively minimal just for the installation of the sign. All right, hearing none, um, please list resolutions number seven through nine for action later this evening. And please move to resolution number 10 and read, Madam Clerk. Resolution 10, Department of Administration and Finance Office of Purchasing, approval of the Omnibus Resolution for the Purchase of Goods and Services, July 1st, 2017 through December 31st, 2017, amount not to exceed $4,240,000. Jackson. Madam President, uh, Deputy Administrator Coltrane is going to uh, cover this item. Okay, Mr. Coltrane. Thank you, Madam President. This uh, ordinance here is used for various items throughout, such as bus tickets, uh, participating in various cooperative, the Burden County Pricing Cooperative, the Morris County Cooperative, uh, cellular phones, uh, election expenses, uh, police and homeland security equipment. Uh, this way, instead, of, and it's usually under $100,000. $100, this way we can buy the products in a expedient manner. Mr. Paul Vecchio. No questions. Mr. McInerney. No, as the, as the uh, uh, person, purchasing director said, this is really just a, a pre-approval process that allows us to avoid having every single contract um, that is in the cooperative agreements or a state contract or amounts that are bid exempt from coming to the board. There's over 18,000 purchase orders a year. And to have them all come to us would be um, exorbitant. Okay. Free orders. Any questions or comments? Please list it. Madam Clerk, please move to uh, resolution number 11 and read. Resolution 11, 12, 13, and 14. Resolution 11, 2017 County Budget Insertion of Items of Revenue from the State of New Jersey, Division of Family Development for Social Service for the Homeless, Division of Community Action, $1,809,311. Resolution 12, 2017 County Budget Insertion of Items of Revenue from the State of New Jersey, Division of Family Development for Work First New Jersey, TANF, Department of Economic Development, Training and Development, Training and Employment, five million eight hundred ninety-five thousand six dollars. Resolution thirteen, uh, twenty seventeen County Budget Insertion of Items of Revenue from the State of New Jersey, Division of Highway Traffic Safety for twenty seventeen. Distracted drivers crackdown. You drive, you text, you pay. Office of the Sheriff, forty thousand uh, dollars. Resolution. 14, 2017 County Budget Insertion of Items of Revenue from the State of New Jersey, Division of Highway Traffic Safety for Click It or Ticket 2017, Office of the Sheriff, $5,500. Okay, Mr. Jackson. Uh, Madam President, uh, item 11 uh, is a six-month uh, grant, and uh, Ms. Uh, Ramos is here from Community Action to give you more information. Okay, please come forward. Please state your name and affiliation for the record. Good evening, Maria Ramos, Division of Community Action. The state have decided to go from the fiscal year to a calendar year, so that we have to um, extend the contract, the current contract, from July 1st to December 2008. 17. Okay. 
Mr. Paul Vecchio? No questions. Mr. McInerney? No questions. Freeholders? Thank you. Please list it for action. Mr. Jackson? Um, uh, also, item 12, Madam President, is another budget insertion amount of uh, $5,895,000. Uh, it also, too, is a six month grant again for the state, is moving to, to match its grants to most of its municipalities' uh, minis uh, fiscal years. And this is a grant from 7117 to 123117. Okay. Thank item. you. Um, you, if you want to, you can continue. Oh, sure. yeah. item, item 13, uh, another budget, budget insertion for $40,000, uh, which, which was a reimbursement for our expenses for a crackdown on uh, texting while driving uh, to the office of the sheriff, and in the amount of $40,000, it was in, it was in play, enforcement from April 1st through April 21st. And item 20, 14 is also, again, another budget insertion in the amount of $5,500 to the, to the sheriff's office. Uh, uh, for a click it or ticket campaign that was in, that was engaged from May 22nd to June 4th. Okay. Um, Mr. Paul Vecchio. No questions. Mr. McInerney. No Freeholders. Okay. Hearing none. Mr. Jackson, anything else to add? Uh, nothing to see, Madam President. Okay. Please. Uh, List resolutions 11 through 14 for action later this evening. Madam Clerk, I'm going to ask that you read into the record at a later time uh, accommodations 15 through 37. Um, freeholders, are there any questions or comments regarding accommodations 15 through 37? Freeholder Siebel. Thank you. I'd like to make a comment about resolution 36. Resolution 36 is proclaiming June as an LGBT Pride Month in Essex County, and I am delighted that we are going to have a freeholder resolution uh, celebrating uh, this event because nationally, every June, we recognize the significant history of LGBT movement for civil rights in the United States, and we celebrate LGBT Pride. And last week, I had the wonderful opportunity to participate in Livingston when the LGBT pride flag was raised at the Livingston Oval. Uh, this resolution encourages the Essex County residents to support and celebrate LGBT rights and connect with their neighbors and become allies for the LGBT community and to attend events to connect with more members. So I'm very pleased to um, have this resolution, this common date, no, it's, a, it's a resolution on our agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Freeholder Siegel. Freeholders, Freeholder Richardson. Yeah, I'd like to be added to 33, 34, 36, I guess 35 is too late, that was May 13th. Well, you went so fast. 33, uh -huh. 34, uh -huh. 36, and I oh, think 36. 35 is too late. Since May 13th, yeah. is that, unless that date yeah. is wrong. No, that's right. It's May 13th, yeah. Okay. But it's not too late for the record. So okay, for the record. Yeah, yeah. Uh, those four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 33 through 36. Correct. You call them out like an auctioner. <laughs> 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 okay. Freeholders. Any other? Um, Freeholder like Jones? I, I, I'm looking at 24. I know it took place, but um, number for the record. 24? Mm hmm. Okay. And um, 36, I would like for my name to go because I attended um, some big affair at the Robert Tree and um, they were dealing with that, that segment of the population. So I'm. Freeholder Steve, would you like to be by acclamation? Sure. So by acclamation, Freeholder Board? Okay, <coughs> everyone is nodding their head yes for the record in the transcripts. Um, so that one's by acclamation. Freelder Siebel. May I be included in resolution 25, please? Yeah. 25, please read. Resolution uh, 25, a resolution declaring June 2nd, 2017, National Gun Violence Awareness Day in Essex County, sponsored by Freeholder Luciano 
and uh, now our Freeholder Siebel. Thank you. Freeholder Luciano. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just want to give a shout out to a young woman from Verona named Toro. She is the one that made me aware that the Camden County Freeholders passed this resolution uh, about a month ago. And I know many of the municipalities in Essex County have also passed the same resolution. So with my recommendation, I would ask if the rest of the freeholders would like to support it by acclamation. Absolutely. Yes. So, I speak for myself, sorry. Freeholders, by acclamation? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you. We uh, absolutely support both of those things, National Gun Violence Awareness, as well as LGBT Pride Month. Um, Freeholder Siebel, just a point of clarity, do we, should we um, edit and also add, L I think the new term is, it keeps evolving, LGBTQ? That's just limit, that's just Essex Question. County. Question. Mm -hmm. That's just Essex County. I understand. Yeah, that's not, but that's not what it's called. Okay, all right. <laughs> Freeholders? All right. So... Now we're going to vote on our agenda. Are there, is there any need to remove from a collective vote uh, any resolution or accommodation from resolutions 1 through 37? Free, um, freeholder Richardson? Eight. Need to remove eight. Okay. Anyone else? All right. Uh, do you have a mover and a second to take resolution number eight? Oh, Moved by freeholders. Oh, I'm sorry. Just, just eight. Just eight. Okay. Yes, I'll move it. All right. Um, moved by freeholder Siebel. Uh, second. Second by freeholder Toro. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Toro. Yes. Freeholder Siebel. Yes. Freeholder Richardson. Present, not voted. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Jones. Yes. Freeholder Johnson? Yes. Freeholder Vice President Gill? Yes. Freeholder Bobadilla? Yes. Freeholder President Timberlake? Yes. So moved. Thank you. Um, do you have a mover and a second to take resolutions one through seven? I'll move it. And you're out of the Resolutions one through seven, and then nine through 37. Moved by Freeholder Bobadilla. Is there a second? Second by Freeholder Johnson. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Freeholder Bobadilla. Yes. Freeholder Vice President Gill. Yes. Freeholder Johnson. Yes. Freeholder Jones. Yes. Freeholder Luciano. Yes. Freeholder Richardson. Yes. Freeholder Siebel. Yes. Freeholder Toro. Yes. Freeholder President Timberlake. Yes. So moved. Thank you. Are there any report of board committees? I think we had our affirmative action report already, huh? Freeholder Jones. Yes. Uh, are, are there any legislative reports? Written communication? Any unfinished business? Any new business to discuss? Now moving to public comment session. Is there any member of the public wishing to comment on any issue at all? Madam Clerk, let the record reflect. We have no member of the public wishing to comment. Closing public comment mm -hmm. session. Uh, just opening up freeholder comment session. Freeholders, freeholder, Good Vice job. President Gill. Thank, thank you, Madam President. Uh, just two quick comments. Uh, first, um, I know there were some congratulations offered um, by, by, by members of the public and members of the administration. Um, I, I do think it's important to just note that um, no one was elected to anything um, yesterday. Um, there was a primary election uh, that, that the people who are running again will stand uh, on the ballot in November where the voters will have a choice to make a pick. So yesterday was a primary election. Uh, congratulations to those who received uh, the backing to run under the banner of the party. Uh, but we still have an election in November that we need people to participate in uh, in great numbers. Um, secondly, just uh, through you, Madam President, for the administration, just to um, constituents request that maybe um, uh, they, if you could follow up through the clerk's office, one, um, just the, the um, meadow in Brookdale Park um, seems to be that we are not cutting the grass um, at the same length uh, that we have in the past. I'm not sure if it's because we've had so much rain, um, but if we could just 
get back to me of if we made any adjustments in either the contractor that we're using there to, to cut that grass in the meadow um, or if there's a, a reason particularly in the areas that are being used uh, for recreational um, and soccer use um, and secondly on the um, there is an issue apparently um, that I'm not familiar with and haven't seen uh, but with, with a multitude of stumps in the park Multitude of stones? Um, stumps. 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 Tree stumps. So I'm not sure if there's a policy around how long we leave the stumps. If the stump remover, I don't know if we have a stump remover. <laughs> <laughs> it's above my pay grade. But uh, um, if just an update on the stump removal process um, in, uh, would be much appreciated. Uh, all politics is local. <laughs> <laughs> Vice President, which park are the stumps? Is it the same park? Brookdale. Okay. I was saying that, um, Mr. Jackson, if you don't immediately know the answer to these questions, I'm sure Mr. Cowboy, <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our park expert, uh, could, could, could maybe help. That's a joke for the record. Um, <laughs> Freeholders? Freeholds or Luciano? Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wanted to put on record earlier tonight, I was over in our county, Mike Shepherd, Ivy Hill Park. Uh, our county was fortunate to host the state's tournament of champions for girls softball, girls varsity softball. Awesome. Um, I just wanted to put on the record and note that in the championship game, uh, Cedar Grove girls lost to Immaculate Heart, three nothing. Um, but you know, to, 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 to shed some light on how good that is. I mean, they, they, they went through, the, through not only their state championship, but to also win a couple of games in the Tournament of Champions is really amazing. And there was one young lady who was their starting pitcher who was made national uh, through headlines on Sports Center earlier this week. She um, is going to be pitching in the first pitch at a Yankee game next month. Um, she was able to strike out 21 of 21 batters in a, in a championship game. I mean, she literally made Sports Center for one of the greatest feats of all time, nationally, not just here in the state of New Jersey. I mean, we almost never hear of that, mm -hmm. that all batters in a state championship game, she struck out. So wow. I wanted to put that on the record, and I'm sure we will have her in here to honor her uh, in due time, along with her team. Thank you. Part of that. That's very cool. Freeholders, I'm hearing that, and I would like us to also um, I'd like to take the opportunity to publicly uh, send my condolences to you, Mr. Poultry, on the loss of your mom. Um, and also, if we could take a moment of silence for um, the dearly departed. Thank you. Okay, motion to adjourn. Move it.